Hey guys, I want to do a little video for you today. This was something that got kind of laid on my heart the other day, and I've just kind of been going over and thinking over it uh, more and more. Um, one of my favorite passages is in Ephesians 2.10, and it talks about how we are um, we are a, a workmanship, you know, created uh, in Christ Jesus for good works. You know, we are are God's workmanship. The the part that really stands out to me is that word workmanship. Uh, that word workmanship in the Greek is the word poema, uh, and it's the word that we basically get our word poem from. And basically what that verse is talking about is it's talking about how we are the poem and, and our life is this poem that God is writing. That, that makes God the author of our lives. He is, he's writing these highs and these lows, and he's, he's tying it all together with rhythm and with, with flow, and it's, it's all for a purpose. It's all going towards an ultimate end. When you look at a poem and how it's structured, it has highs, it has lows, it has flow, but it, it ultimately goes in a particular direction and it ends with a specific purpose, with a, with a story to tell as to why the poem was written. And, uh, and that's, that's kind of our lives. There's another place in uh, in Romans nine where Paul is actually uh, quoting from the Old Testament. He's talking about how uh, God is the potter and we are the clay. Um, but there's an interesting part to that as well because when a potter gets in and he starts forming the clay, that clay is malleable. It's uh, it's able to be molded and 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 just you know kind of forced into shape fairly easily. Um, however. If you take that clay and you leave it, it, it's never exposed to any kind of heat. It, it will just return back to its normal form. It, it can't, it can't hold the form that you're actually trying to make it hold to make it useful. So if you're making a cup or a bowl or something, you're designing that clay to do a specific task. It can't maintain that form without heat. And this goes to something that uh, we talk about even in, in the combatives realm as well, and that is that uh, brotherhood is born in shared adversity. And it's the idea that, that bonds are forged with, with shared adversity, that bonds are formed with, with heat, and that those bonds stay uh, in, in much the same way that the clay requires heat, it requires baking in order for it to maintain its form, in order for for it to, to not return back to its original state. And this is something that Jesus had talked about too when he talked about that, that we would bear fruit and that that fruit would remain. And it's not talking about that we bear fruit in the sense that, that we bear fruit, um, that others are fruit. The fruit of the spirit is talking about peace, joy, love. It's talking about our own growth. It's talking about um, day by day we're growing closer to God. Day by day we're being shaped and we're being uh, molded into whatever it is that He has designed you or me or or whoever to be. We're being shaped into that poem, and that poem is going to have highs and lows. Um, it's going to have you know, parts that, that stand out. But if a poem only had highs, it would have no rhythm, it would have no beauty, it would have no purpose other than just that high. But you need lows in order to accentuate that high. So by the same token, that clay needs heat in order for the most graceful, merciful thing that God could possibly do for us is not to go through the process of just shaping us and then leaving us and allowing us to fall back into our original state. Instead, God does the most graceful, uh, merciful thing for us, and he applies heat to our lives. Once we're molded, once we're shaped into an area, he applies heat to that area so that that area can remain, so that that fruit can remain. And then he works on another area, and then he applies heat, and so on and so forth. And this process goes on and on, and the Bible kind of uses this... Um, this symbology a lot about heat and about dross being removed and about clay being heated and and all of this and about the highs and lows of a poem and, and it uses this symbology a lot to talk about the fact that your Christian life is not going to be cake and ice cream. Um, 
every now and then you're going to have to deal with issues and that those issues are specifically designed for a reason. It's designed to draw you closer to Jesus. It's designed to draw you closer to the Father and to make you more like Christ. So as you're going through these difficult times, as you're going through things in your life that are are life-changing, um, that are reshaping you, the question that you have to ask is, what is the lesson that I can take from this that is going to make me more like Christ? How am I going to deal with this situation? Because Jesus said that, you know, that they'll know you by your fruits. They'll know you uh, by how you deal with these situations. It's not the fact that you're going to deal with trials and tribulations. I mean, who wouldn't want a God that that basically gave us all Mercedes and Jaguars and, and stuff like this? Um, but that's not what Jesus promised. Jesus promised that um, that you're to you're to count the costs because the road to being a Christian is going to be a difficult one. It's going to be one of being reshaped and remolded, and it's one that is going to require heat in order for those changes to become permanent, to become part of who you are. And this is part of what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives, as the Holy Spirit basically comes in and works on us and makes these changes, and then the Father applies through his sovereignty and through his sovereign will he applies heat to those situations to to allow those uh, situations or to allow those changes rather to solidify and to make us into the people who who were actually designed to be so wanted to share that with you guys um, hope I didn't ramble too much but that was something that got it laid on my heart so all right God bless